um, going back to that um, phase in your career early on where you made that decision to almost yeah, immerse yourself in as many different practitioners as you, as you could, as you mentioned, like different codes of football and working in the clinic and um, really working on your, on your skills from a diagnosis point of view and manual therapy. Uh, how important do you think that sort of generalist approach um, was before, you know, then going back into like a role like Sydney FC, we got that part-time role, but how important early on do you think getting exposing yourself to all those different opportunities was for, for now looking back? Yeah, I, I think it was massive. I remember people thinking I was crazy when Stan had said, you've, you've done a good job. Like we want to keep you on to be um, a physio with our club next year with the first team. And I sort of said, look, Stan, I, I, you know, I want to go and get my, clinical experience he looked at me like thinking are you sure like this is a pretty cool job and I, and I thought the same thing I'm making a mistake here should I be should I be yeah. staying here because this is my dream but I think I just knew I wasn't at the level yet I needed to be at to be a good physio I think you get complex cases in, in professional football and if you haven't got that experience and that confidence in your skills or your hands or your assessments or your rehab you get found out pretty quick yeah. as you know so I think looking back on it now I'm so grateful I, I took what are some of your other ways that you like about honing your craft um, in terms of knowledge, um, practical skills, um, yeah, take us through some of your favourite ways to, to upskill. I, th I think this is a massive one for me, the, the podcast on the way to work. From where I used to live in Australia to get to Sydney FC was an hour drive there and back, so I used to smash through podcasts on the way to work. Normally on the way home, I was mentally fried, so I couldn't get on the way back, but on the way to work, I'd get through podcasts. I think last year from Blackburn to where I lived in Press, which was a good year of, um, again, podcasting and I think earlier in my career, I was massive on attending all the courses that I could, uh, the hips mm -hmm. and groins and ankles and backs. I think, yeah, these days it's more through some really cool books that I've been recommended or, or through podcasts. I think in terms of um, yeah, knowledge, I think COVID for me really helped the pandemic, which seems strange, but I'd been doing things for three or four years at Sydney FC and hadn't really sort of mapped out what I was doing, why I was doing it, what was my processes. So I think having that two month break when we all didn't know if we had a job or not to go back to when it was all up in the air, mm -hmm. um, a colleague and I at Sydney FC got asked to present um, with this pacey performance sort of online um, return to performance process for an ACL injury that we'd, we'd worked on. So that was really helpful to sit down and map out my principles and philosophy and my rehab style. And off the back of that, I had a bit of an itch to just make a, a whole booklet of my processes. It's such a short time frame. How do you build strong relationships? Um, it's, it's a hard one. I think it comes through time normally. So you're there for a long time. They, they recognize your face. They recognize, I think, your work ethic. If you're committed and you work hard, I think you earn respect from coaches and players so quickly. Mm -hmm. If you graft and I think if, you're a, if you care about the person and not just the outcome, a really cool quote is the people don't care how much you know, it's how much you care, isn't it? So I think once you care about the person and, and show them that you're about them and what's your goals, what do you want to get back to? I always try to empower them in, in a longer term rehab with setting some, some upper body goals or some core goals or some performance related goals because I think that way they buy into the process rather than it being about what you think they've got to achieve it's about well, do you want to get better at jumping off your left foot when you're head of the ball or do you want to get better at striking off your weaker leg or yeah so I think incorporating the, the athlete um, and in terms of coaches I think being transparent I think is a key one uh, I think taking responsibility when it goes right is great and then if things go wrong you put your hand up and go look that didn't go to plan and, and that's that's on us we're reflecting on the reasons why as a team we're going to go through that that particular rehab um, and, and let you guys know what we think rather than going like everything's great and when things go wrong you you point the finger at something else or someone else so some of your favorite ways to make meetings effective um, with you know whether it be a daily meeting or a weekly meeting you know, take us through your, your sort of um, yeah I, I think they're always hard to make effective because they're, they're always sort of um, either first thing of the morning people are waking up or end of the day people want to wrap up and go home so I think as long as you've got an agenda so where we are now we've got an agenda where um, Carl who's our um, our performance person, he'll go through sort of player availability and numbers. I'll go through the morning assessments and, and diagnoses in terms of who's in, who's out, who's modified. Then we have um, one of our SNC coaches, Jack, who goes through sort of the pre act and gym program. And then we have our own sort of 10 minute segments in the morning. So we know that it flows to, to the agenda rather than getting hijacked by a manager that comes in and goes, hey guys, our team's all they're not, they're not strong enough or we're, we're, we're not powerful enough and half an hour goes by like that. We go, well, actually, we've got to get through these points. Do you mind if we chat to you after lunch or during lunchtime? The department, the medical and high performance department, what does that look like? What, what, how big is your team in terms of the women's <laughs> program? Yeah, the women's program, we've got basically um, two and a half physios. We've got a um, head of performance, uh, an SNC, a sports scientist. We have a um, part-time masseur with us and we have coaches and analysts and everything else so that's within our silo and then as a greater team we've probably got about 
I'd say 15 full-time physios at the club, which we link up with regularly. Yeah, well. um, we've got this, this thing called a link, a link project early in last year where um, yeah, Robin coordinated sort of like a, a catch up between two people, often a senior and a junior physio. Everyone did a project and presented it back. Oh, awesome. I think that was great because, yeah, because that way I got to see everybody on like a Zoom twice for twice um, in, in space of six months. And off the back of that, got people's numbers and we've been sort of interconnected ever since.